All right, guys, let's do this. We all want to talk about and hear about the round one matchups that the Clippers have versus the Phoenix Suns. So this segment is going to be dropping Friday on YouTube before our Monday release because we're talking Clippers Suns and game one is this Sunday. In the media, P, not one ESPN analyst has you guys picked to get out of the first round against Phoenix. Do you guys as players pay attention to any of those media critiques during playoff time? I mean, I'm not going to speak for every player. I'm sure that there's guys that, like, this fuels. Um, for me personally, like, no. I don't care what uh, uh, analysts have to say about what, you know, our outcome is going to be. Fact of the matter is, like, we're the ones out there. We want to win you know what I mean we're out there to compete if we got a chance to win it like that's the only motivation we need mm. you know what I mean like the only motivation is to be the last team standing regardless of what somebody has to say like that shit goes through one ear and not the other like they hold no weight to me personally um but you know it, it might be different across the league I don't I don't know some people do feel from that um <clears throat> some people do gain extra motivation from that <laughs> and feel like they got to prove something like maybe that's a chip that some people need uh, for me, I don't I don't need that chip. Yeah, yeah. As a co-host, I actually don't pay attention to other co-hosts uh, the same way you don't pay attention to media. <laughs> right. That's kind of it's just like just what goes was to that? One ear, like, not the other. Yeah, like <laughs> fly yeah. and shit. Don't hear it at all. Don't hear Bushy. it at all. <laughs> <laughs> and so when you guys are approaching a matchup right now, you guys are not considered the favorites. The Phoenix Suns are the favorites right now, mm -hmm. uh, according to Vegas odds. Whether that's the media, is there any? different approach you guys take. I know you just kind of touched on it that some guys use that as a chip on their shoulder, but is there any, you know, difference in the way you kind of approach the game? It's all or nothing at this point, you know what I mean? So there's obviously a different <laughs> approach that you have to come to the game with. Like, it might be like, it, and it's small things. Like, you know, I'll say to myself like, all right, I'm gonna go after every rebound. Like. This is when it matters. Like, you know what I mean? Regular season, like something might be aching, something might like playoff, no. Nah. Go get every rebound. Like make every play. Like try to get every stop. You know what I mean? Um, and it, it's just the small things that stick out that you 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 just hone in on. And it's like if if we wanna win, like I gotta give my team every chance to to possibly <clears throat> win. Like there is no getting tired. There is no I need a break. If I can play forty eight, I'm gonna play forty eight. You know what I mean? Like, that's just the mindset, and that's the approach you take when it comes to playoff time. Yeah, I think the biggest difference, at least what I notice as a fan, is the defense. I notice everyone, <clears throat> just in a couple of these playing games that I've been watching, everyone's just locked in on that defensive end, and I feel like that kind of gets pushed to the side a little bit during the regular season, but when playoffs come around, it's just, it's a whole different game, and I think most people can see that. So, when you guys are heading into game one, Coach Lou, uh, I know you speak very, very highly of him, and he arguably coached one of the biggest upsets in NBA history uh, with the Cavs in 2016. You know, from that experience, when you have a coach like that, how much do you guys rely uh, on Coach Lou during these playoff series? I mean, I think you just pull from his resume of being and doing the undoable, coming back down, 3-1 to win the championship like you pull from that whether he has to mo like he bro what are we playing for you know what I mean like it's not like he has to go in a locker room and right. drill some and shit like, like hey guys we're playing to you yeah, know, win. like bro we, what are we we know what we, we playing what for you know what I mean but I think when he's coaching when he's you know breaking down schemes when he's going through game plans there is a level of like confidence you have in him knowing like all right he's bro he did some shit that damn near is impossible to do you know what i mean Crazy. and so his resume speaks for uh like what what he's capable of and uh yeah bro you you, you just you you lean on that like you lean on that like you got a great leader who regardless of if we're down 2-0 like we've we've been in series uh <clears throat> Last year, not not this past year, but the year before when we were healthy, the Dallas series, we went down 0-2. Uh, we went down 0-2, I think, uh, series. But I think the whole run, we went down 0-2. 
and we clawed and climbed our way back out of it. Um, and that just comes from like, you know, his resume, how he coaches, the confidence he puts into everybody just to allow you to go out, play your game. Like, we'll get through this shit and we'll, we'll figure it out. Yeah, I think I think it's a good question. You know, I think a lot of fans think of of this, but because I've had this argument with kind of like my friends, like how much does the coach actually affect, you know, the outcome of the game in the NBA? Because you guys are all high level athletes, the best of the best. You got superstars out there. And, you know, some coaches are X's and O's guys. Mm -hmm. And then some guys, you know, they're more of a, you know, player coaches. Mm -hmm. And so when you look at Coach Lou, is he more of an X and O guy or is he more of a player's coach? I'm I, I'm going to say he's a bit of both to not give you like a cliche answer. But honestly, he's a bit of both because and it, and it's more he's he's more like his brilliance really comes into play around playoffs um, because like it, it comes down to like who's going to give you the best chance. Mm hmm. And he doesn't have a problem having those conversations of like, hey, this might not be the series for you. You know what I mean? Like, you're a big piece to what we're doing, but this matchup is not benefiting us. You know what I mean? So right. we got to go a different direction. So he's good at just reading from a, a game plan standpoint. And then X's and O's, like, you know, he's good at drawing up something based off of what we do well, based off of how they're guarding us, their coverage. Um, and like, you know, just trying to get us easy and, and, and quick opportunities. Like he's good at seeing that on the fly. Like it might be some shit that we've never you ran seen before. something you say. Good adjustments. Yeah. Cause you know, you always missing stuff. You say, yeah, he, he be missing my you know, fast break, my fast break, uh, dunks you know, stuff, so. after the whistle dunks. Yeah, you he said he's seen that. I'm okay. Shout he missed that. Me. But, uh, <laughs> nah, he, he's good. Like it'll be some shit we've never ran. He'll just draw some shit up in the huddle, like on the clipboard, just some new shit. And. <laughs> Like, all right, like we'll run it and shit, be a wide open layup. Like wow. that 360 dunk, we've never ran no fucking back door. It was just some shit like, oh, okay, this is how Dort's garden. Like, let's clear this one side, give P, you know, downhill, uh, back cut. Let's give him like, you know, right, right. clear lane. Shit work, easy right. basket. You know what I mean? So he, he'll he read some stuff so based he off did the game. See, so he did see you do the, th the, uh, the, the windmill. He, he saw me do the three sixty. He already set it up. He already knew you was gonna he, do it. He saw me doing something crazy. He's been seeing it. Yeah, yeah. He, That's why I'm saying. <laughs> I'm, my bad, Lou. I was saying you haven't seen stuff. He had a but vision. He just let me know you set up stuff so good. You already seen it happen. That's what he do. He had a vision. He did the windmill, P. <laughs> Damn. So the Suns are undefeated with KD in the lineup since the trade. Uh, and we saw this with the Warriors a few seasons ago. Okay. But does how much of a difference does KD being implemented into their team? How much does that just change their whole outlook and oh, just their team in general? Yeah, it, is, it changes the whole dynamic. Like it's rare that you trade for a player and that player is the best player on your team. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like yeah, it, no, that's how, crazy. That, it, that doesn't happen often. Usually you make a trade and it's for a piece to go along with your two stars. But a guy like KD, and I think you're right, it's rare that a team trades and it's the best player on the team. But I would even take it a step further with KD. He's just so skilled. Yeah. Like his skill set, he can do everything. Yeah. Go left, go right. I don't even know what the scouting report for KD even looks there like. Is, that there, would, Bro, our... Well, I don't want to give I don't want to give our information out of what our scouting report is, but <laughs> like he's yeah, and, and that's what's tough about it. Like he's so gifted offensively that it's there's no there's no coverage. Like honestly, it's just hopefully he missed shots. Like yeah. hopefully he's not hot that night. And it's it's that that's that's literally like like when you're guarding him, just fuck. Hope it's a long night. Hope he's missing shots. Like just try to show bodies and you know what I mean. Make it tough as possible. Like that's just how you have to match up with them. Yeah, but he's so good as a scorer, and I think he's he's why what makes them so special now is he's so underrated as a playmaker mm -hmm. that like now. So? Oh, absolutely. Yeah, he absolutely. makes the game easy. For he makes everyone. the game easy for everybody around him because he can get he's anywhere he wants on the floor, yeah. and he's seven foot. He can see over the defense. He's going to draw two people. And, and from there, he's just going to play, make, and make the game easy for everybody around him. So you have that with Book, with CP, like Aiden, what they what they bring, what they can do. 
um, that it, it definitely changed the game. So what I don't like is is I think it's tough what they gave up. Yeah, giving up Bridges, giving up Cam Johnson, losing Crowder. Like that was their they defenders. Gave up how many players for him? A lot. So you're not suiting up to start the series, but with your playoff experience, how are you going to help your teammates heading into this game one? I think it's just like at these moments, it's kind of just being like the extension of Tilu, like just making sure we're locked in on schemes, make sure we're locked in on plans. Um, and just like more so just, you know, especially for like Y, for Russ, for Zoo. Um, E.G., like all the guys is just being, you know, like a lot, like being a player, seeing what I'm seeing, how I can help them with, you know, whether they're double team and why. OK, where the where's the double team coming from or zoo? Like, all right, where's the rotation coming from? Like, who's rotating? Mm-hmm. Is it a guard? Like, OK, dunk his ass like it's a little guy rotating to you like shit like that. Try to just make the game smoother for those guys. I'm going to be a sponge and student of the game as it's going on, but just trying to relay, like, what I'm seeing and giving them my vision of, like, how we can, like, easily tackle this. So what's up with this playoff schedule? I know a lot of Clipper fans, I've been seeing them on Twitter, and I didn't know this, but you guys actually have the least amount of rest in comparison to the rest of the NBA for those first four games Mm -hmm. of this round one. Who makes that schedule? Did you even know about that? Like, who, the, what? The, how it's, does that work? It's bullshit. It's <laughs> bullshit. The league been fucking us up for a while. Uh, <laughs> okay. <laughs> They've been fucking us up for a while. Uh, like, no, I mean, it, and it's tough for us. And I want to say the past, like, couple of years where we've just had a tough schedule of playing the most games, going into All-Star break. Like, we, we've just had years of tough schedules. With all of it, I, I think if we could just look at it like let's get let's fucking take care of business. We'll get the most rest out of this. Get ready, you know. Hopefully, uh, see where I'm at. Maybe I'm good. You better be. Mm. And uh, yeah, we 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 keep it going. But yeah. it, it, that is tough for us. I saw a few videos of you getting some shots up. You know, Coach Lou. That was actually really funny. Like it, the guy in the gym was allowed to be there, but yeah. he's recording you, and Coach Lou kind of like gets in front of you and is like yeah. trying to block it. But shot was looking good. Yeah. I mean, hey. Now nah, it's funny because it's playoff time, so media is at an all-time high. Usually, it's like five people, six people. You know what I mean? Watching us from media, right. <clears throat> bro. It was like thirty people. And they're interviewing T. Lou, but like every head is turned back looking, looking at, at me, you. shooting and shit. You know what I mean? And the coaches is like, so how long? <laughs> <laughs> it was my first day on the yeah, court. Yeah, you know yeah, what I yeah. mean? They're joking, but they're like, all right, so so how long you thinking? Like when you back? What you um, doing right now? Just shooting? I'm just stationary shooting. Oh, yeah, okay. first time. Just testing out, see if I could jump on it, push okay. off on it, stuff like that. How you feel? See how I feel. I was going to play around with them, with the media too and be like, yo, yo, T. Lou, who I got? Like, who? <laughs> What's my matchup? <laughs> that would have been good, bro. <laughs> I was going to, but I was just, I was in the moment. I was enjoying being on the court again. I was happy. Well, since we're talking about playoff, guess who you are right now? I'm Playoff P. Come on! <laughs> Jackie, uh, are you over there checking your price picks? Man, you know I am, man. Them play-in games was crazy. Man, I won big thanks to SGA and Brandon Ingram beating their projections. How'd you do? Man, you know I'm way up. But we can't just be talking like this and not letting the people know what we're talking about. Let the people know what Prize Picks is, man. So, Prize Picks is a daily fantasy app. You pick two to six players, then pick if they will have more or less than their Prize Picks projections. Yep. You're not competing against other people, it's just you versus the projections available. So, How'd you win, Jackie? Look, all I did was place the entry on Zach Levine to get more projected points than what he got. And then uh, uh, Scott Bourne. I made, I made sure I placed, placed the entry where he did less assist than what he was going to get. And at the end of the day, I know how much money I won. I always do. I want to tell the people what prize picks can get if they do the same thing I did. 
You can win up to 25 times your money on any entry. And on top of that, all first-time users that deposit and use our promo code PODCASTP will receive a 100% instant deposit match up to a hundred dollars. That means if you deposit twenty dollars, Prize Picks will give you twenty dollars. If you deposit one hundred dollars, Prize Picks will give you one hundred dollars. Cha-ching! 